Casing the Cover is a monthly podcast where friends and library co-workers, Mary and Jen, review books, study the publishing industry, and try to unlock the secrets behind every cover. Can you judge a book by its cover? Join Mary and Jen on the case to find out. Hello, and welcome to a very spooky episode of Casing the Cover. I am Mary, and with me, as always, is my host, Jen. Hello, Jen. Hello, Mary. Okay, that's my, my Boris Car... <laughs> is it Karloff? Boris Karloff? Yes. It's not a very good Boris Karloff. All right. Though my Boris Karloff is about the energy I have today. Yeah. So so Jen's gonna s- scare me. I Well, I don't know if this book is really scary as much as it is... Disturbing? Really disturbing and super jacked up. So uh, is, I don't know if you can tell, but this is like the first time we've actually been recording in the same room. Oh, yeah. In a very long time. We did for our live show, but that was different. Because that was broadcasting. Yeah, that was different. This is a lot of fun. I like having Mary in my little sound sound room. Girl, what am I sitting It's on? fun. You're probably sitting on Baby Yoda. I'm sitting on Baby Yoda. I met Jen. This is Baby Yoda, and, and we have Ryooki and Kenoki and all the characters. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> I'm a nerd. I've been establishing this a lot. Really? Bit. We're nerds? Yeah. Who would have thought? A little bit of a nerd. Oh, speaking of nerds, before I go into <clears throat> this story... Mm-hmm. I also need to talk about how I was on the Tipsy Nerds podcast. Yes, because wasn't that the reason why you read this book? No, I read a different book for them. Oh, But okay. this is supposed to be spooky, so I'm going to stick with spooky. I will talk about Swamplandia on another episode. So sometime in the future, I will talk about Swamplandia with an exclamation point. Can you tell what kind of a mood Jen is in right now? Yes. No, how are you supposed I, to say that title? All you've been reading is weird, creepy stuff. I have been reading a lot of weird, creepy this was actually a palate cleanser from Swamplandia, because Swamplandia was... I'm totally going to say it like that every time. I don't care. <laughs> it was a really jacked up book that made me super sad, and it was full of, like, allegories and alligators and... Allegorical alligators. Allegorical alligators, yes. I'm going to stop talking is about it like Is now. it like Alligator Animal Farm? No. Oh. No. It's just sad and jacked. But when my Tipsy Nerd special guest star appearance podcast shows up on the world of things, then I will talk about it on here, too. We'll release them at the same time. It'll be really weird. Sure, let's try to time that out. Yeah! Yeah! Anyway. Our maybe once a month episode that we release, we'll try to time it. Next year will be better, Mary. Uh, not holding out any hope. All right. Let's well, get through 2021 first, please. Okay. Okay. We're going to get through 2021. We're going to get through burnt tongues because I feel like 2021 can be summed up in burnt tongues because burnt tongue is like, you know, it doesn't really go away. This book immediately shocked me. Giant freaking spoiler also warning. Yeah, this, I think just, just you mentioning this book sounds like this book is a whole lot of trigger warning. So much trigger warning. Every trigger you have, this Pick is a one. warning for it. Yes. Pick a trigger, it's in this book. And yet, I pretty comfortably got through this book. <laughs> well, I'm okay. So, before you begin explaining to us the creepy awfulness, what is, like, your general comfort level? You like horror, right? I, okay, I like horror. I have no issue with blood and gore. There has been one scene in one movie... And I figure it's been long enough since these movies have come out. The Saw movies? Yeah, I'm gonna watch those. So there is a scene with a pit full of hypodermic needles. Oh, I've, I've seen I've seen that scene. Jen was done right yeah. there. That was that was all. That is that is the one see, thing. I've I've explained this to you. This is Mary's way of dealing with horror. I like the idea of horror. I like you know, I like thrillers, I like suspense, I like mystery. I like the idea of horror, but I cannot watch it. I cannot do the scary, boomy music. I cannot do the jumping out of things. I cannot do gore. I cannot do body parts being sliced open and chopped off and exploding. I can't do it. So I go and I watch found flicks and a bunch of other YouTubers who just explain to you the plots of horror movies where they just go, here's the ending of Saw and here's how you get out of the traps in Saw. And of course, it's like the highly edited filter because they can't believe it on YouTube. That is how I enjoy horror. I can't do it. I can't do it in real time. Mm-mm. I'm a little more balls to the ball with my horror. And I have, I think that we talked about this last Halloween. I actually don't read as much horror as I watch, but I have found that horror short stories are where it's 
sat for the very first horror short story anthology that I ever really got into that I was way too young to be reading. I don't even remember how young I was, but I was definitively way too young to be reading this. It was called Hottest Blood, and yes, it was erotica and horror. We did talk about this. Yes. yes. And yeah, so I probably shouldn't have been reading it. It definitely set the stage for... Oh, I Whereas I read that one with the kid with the green ribbon on her neck, and then I was scarred for life. Oh, yeah. I read those, too. And, like, all those weird, scary stories to tell them about friends. I read those, too. Yeah. I just like horror. But short stories, because I want to get to the punch. These start with the punch. I feel like I don't like horror short stories, because they always have some weird, vague ending, and there's no answer to any of your questions. All of these stories... So, again, massive trigger warning. Please don't judge me for having read this book. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's not a trigger warning. That's a... That's a cry for mercy. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I'm, like, giving this out to the world, but it was really a great book. The visuals and the viscosity of this book, totally stunning. It is sticking with me. There are two stories in here that are still with me when I go to bed at so night. So is this, is this a short story collection? Yes. Okay. So let me, let me go back to that. This is a short story collection. The primary editor in it is the guy who wrote Fight Club. So Chuck Palahniuk. I hope I said that right. Uh, I really love the book Fight Club. I've also seen the movie Fight Club. I think that the film does an okay job of sticking to the premise and the soul of that story. I don't Just, remember either well enough. I actually have read Fight Club, and I have also seen Fight Club. I had to do it for college, because I was in a, an adaptive film class. And we did Fight Club, but I feel like the book was better. Oh, yeah. It's really excellent actors, but the, I don't know, except for Ron Carter, I can't get it. But yeah, the ending of that movie was weird and vague and, like, didn't understand it. I think he dies in the book. Spoiler, well. spoiler for Fight Club. How old is that book? If you uh, haven't seen Fight yeah. Club or watched Fight Club. 99. Like, that book came out in 99. The book is 20 years old. Yeah. It's fine. We can spoil it. So, anyway, the guy that wrote Fight Club is the primary editor for this, giving you some perspective. The, they, the Fight Club is just weird. It's not gory. It's got some it's violent, but it's not stuff like in it. It's not like there's gory. It's not overdoses. Saw. No, no, well, it's more real. Yeah, like Saw is granted. It happens in a real world setting, and the traps, I suppose, could be real, and the people could be real. But it's so over the top that it's yeah. freaking weird. This is more like. Like, people are overdosing. People are killing each other for, like, drug-related... Oh, so it's like, it's like Law & Order. Yeah, only they're not afraid to show the blood. And, and the f- foaming mouths from overdosing. Have you ever watched Law & Order? No. That show's a lot more graphic than you think it would be. Really? Yeah. Law & Order yeah. kind of fucks your brain sometimes. You can only watch so much Law & Order, because then you're like, wow, there's rapists everywhere. Specifically SVU, that's the one I was watching. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That show is kind of more intense than, like, a lot of those crime shows can get a little much... These are still definitely never going to be on primetime TV. No. No, never. So the very first story, it reaches down into the things that we don't talk about. Things that you shouldn't talk about. So three, two, one spoilers. The very first story is narrated through the voice of 13 or 14 year old girl who is one of the three girls who fails at committing suicide. Together, they create a suicide pact to poison themselves by mixing certain chemicals they rent for the night this really expensive hotel room and they basically tape up all the shower curtains to create a, a death bubble for themselves. Mm-hmm. They start violently vomiting because of this and nobody told them that this was going to happen it's on the It's a dumb way to kill yourself. It's a dumb way to kill yourself. Not that we're giving anybody advice. Don't kill yourself. Disclaimer. It's do. But it's from the perspective of these preteen and young teenage girls. It's not like some person in their 30s or 40s mm-hmm. or, or some 50 year old dude who has, like, lost all his money. This is children coming up with ways to kill themselves, talking about it in the most scientific, chill, sort of, this is what we're doing for a girls' night kind of way. Who wrote these stories? A whole bunch of different people. Okay. So, apparently, a bunch of them were students of Chuck uh, uh, okay. or Dennis Windmere because... They're all part of, like, the same media group, and they all have, like, students who work work and write with them and that kind of thing. Okay. So, it's a collection of stories. They collected these. They were put to, like, rigorous testing and editing and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And, yeah, that's your opening. And they go downhill from there. There's one with a woman who's trying to desperately lose weight before her high school reunion because she was, like, the beauty queen in high school. And she has since gained a lot of weight. She ingests. This is like the adult, really awful version of scary stories to tell in the dark. 
Yes. Yeah, yes. I hate this. And it's like, don't do these things. This is crazy. The one story that, like, because it's an animal thing and I can't handle it, I started listening to it and I got too far to stop. You know, that goes. I did audiobook this, which, by the way, is the way to go, I think, with this one, because there are some really neat little sound effects and things. They almost radio theater it. Doesn't really make it, like, harder to get through, though, listening to it. A little? Yeah. But it was so really good. I'm jacked up. Again, I apologize for my brain. I Fucked really up radio agree. play, man. I'm sorry. I apologize for my brain. So, the animal one. I am going to tell you guys, so if you decide to listen to this, I will relieve you of the pain and suffering. The animal one actually, it has a nice ending, better than I expected. And I feel like it's a people getting what they deserve sort of book, rather than a just let's be gory for gore's sake kind of book. Animal as in, like, animal is tearing apart people's? Or, like, animal is suffering? No, the animal is suffering. Jacked up. Jane. I know. That's why. I, but you know how you start listening to an animal that is injured story, and then you're like, "Oh, I gotta stop no, now." I don't. Then, then you have to listen to the end of the no, no one watches stop. those sad cat videos on the internet. And I tell them to stop it. Like you have to listen to the end to know everything turned out okay. And relatively speaking, considering the way this book goes, that cat turns out okay. It's a cat. It makes it even harder. Like Jen. I had like some real feelings about that one, but that's because they did it so well. It was good writing. Yeah, it's a good thing. I no, don't read this book. I won't read. I pondered a lot of. Things. It's okay. okay. The cat is okay, Mary. I reassure you, on the side. That is okay. The rest of the book has got a lot of stuff in it that doesn't make any sense at certain times. Yeah, because weird short story horror don't make sense. And they get weirder <clears throat> and more disconnected from reality as they go forward, I feel like. Because they start out with kind of this straight, this is bad, this is a bad situation, mm-hmm. things suck for these characters, or these characters are making bad life choices. And then, it, then we get to a zombie whorehouse at the end. So when we, by the time we get to the zombie whorehouse, we're completely desensitized. Sounds like the other short story collection that we've done on this podcast. Oh, which one was that? When we, the one that me and AE did, the sci-fi one. One where, like, you know, it started with, like, you know, I'm an alien, and then it ended with, you know, like, oh, I'm being eaten alive by my students in a dream, but it's not a dream, it's that shit. It goes from I'm super uncomfortable to I'm super confused, but I'm fully uncomfortable. That's why I don't like short fiction. I feel like contemporary short fiction, the entire aim of it is to confuse you and make you uncomfortable. Yes. And it's missing all the elements of storytelling that I like, like character development and plot. And so when it's just like, here's 10 pages and I got to do whatever I can with 10 pages to make you feel really awful and uncomfortable. This is especially true with horror and with Mm sci-fi short fiction. I just want to make you feel as uncomfortable as I can in in 10 pages. And that's where you get 13 year olds describing them violently puking up their own suicide attempt. They want to fuck you up in 10 pages or less. Yes. And that's exactly what this book, I mean, this book comes right out and says that it is not a afraid to be like yeah this is what we're doing so while some of them may go into it and be like no no we're telling good stories this is like no we're here to jack your brain and that is the whole purpose and i'm like okay i knew what i was getting into sort of and i gotta say this was my palate cleanser from swamplandia this was less devastating than that book jesus (laughs) okay it's because you're not invested in any of the characters in the short stories this is probably true yes Yes, and also they did get kind of over the top. I was trying to see if they made a list of the stories in here. See, they say 72 stories were submitted. There were not 72 stories no. in here, obviously. This one says three high school girls plan to commit suicide. This, no. Charlie is the cat one. Paper is just weird. It gets super sci-fi and very bizarre. Mm. And this woman is drawing this little stick figure woman on a paper towel roll. And, like, keep, people keep tearing it off. And then her boyfriend says having this nightmare about her being worn up. It's very weird. That one. Is like, what is that even about? There's a story called Melody in which the character who is telling the story is super obsessed with this woman named Ed. Apparently he gets her as his girlfriend. Only not really. No. She a corpse girlfriend. No. She a robot girlfriend. No. She a hypnotized girlfriend. No. Drug girlfriend. <laughs> Voodoo girlfriend. No. Apparently, this character he's a robot had some sort of a brain injury at some point, and so his parents buy him a blow up doll so that he uh, leaves this girl alone. That's close enough to robot girlfriend. It's weird. It's weird one. Is this supposed to be a horror anthology, yes. or is it just weird? Weird, but also horror. 
Because <laughs> wolf dolls aren't horror. I also like some of the way they talk about this. So, like, a crippled schizophrenic Vietnam veteran gives advice on crushes to his young neighbor and crushes. We're not going to go into that one. <laughs> there is one where the character pretends to be a famous writer because he's a failed writer. And he pretends to be this famous writer who is a reclusive and nobody knows what this guy really looks like or acts like or anything. So he successfully like makes himself out to this guy and it causes so much stress to the real author that the real author has a heart attack. And so the guy goes to jail. But as soon as he goes to jail, he's already got people asking for the rights to his story and his book. And all of the rest of his books. This whole thing is crazy. That almost sounds like the, the plot of that Johnny Depp movie. Which one? Where he's like the author. He's like an author, but he also maybe murdered his girlfriend or something. Secret Window. That one. Yeah. That's yeah. a Stephen King one. That's why. That sounds like that. So yeah, it, it basically is just really sad. Oh, Dietary is the one where the ex-homecoming goes to extreme lengths to gain her figure back. Yeah, it's super crazy. He saw has a plot. Yes. Although that gets weird, too. I know. <laughs> it's super weird. Oh, there's one about having sex with animals, like having sex with a dog. I this guess. was the best of 72 short stories. The most jacked up of 72 short so, stories. Uh, yeah, I, I judge this. I judge this hard. I just don't like that. As a writer, the people whose idea of being a writer is I have to affect people in any way I can. I have to be profound. I have to make them think. So I'm going to write about fucking a dog. Yep. Or actually being fucked by a dog. <laughs> that doesn't make it better. No, it doesn't. Nor does it make it better fiction. <laughs> yeah. Why did you read this again? I Because I needed a palate cleanse. And I liked Fight Club. And I like weird shit. Read some Austin, Jen. I can't. Like, no, I can't get into that. I'll fall asleep. And this messed with me. And I, I liked how it messed with me. And I know. I'm dark and I'm twisted and there's something wrong with me. And I fully embrace that. And I'm sorry. To all of our listeners who now think that I'm a really disturbed individual. Well, <laughs> if they knew you, they would already think that. <laughs> I would already know. And I think, you know, to some degree, like, I have experienced some things in life. I, I won't go into, like, all the things I've experienced in life because then that would really make you guys think I'm totally jacked up. But I'm not. I'm a very normal person. Really. Very normal. I just also really appreciate good writing that is unafraid to kind of go, this is jacked up and I'm still going to write about it. And I'm going to write about it really well. It also really makes me wonder how much experience with a capital E or a capital X some of these characters or some of these authors have. I mean, to a degree, some of that seems like stuff you could get from personal experience. Yeah, there's you know, definitely stuff. You could, get, you could write a story about being a suicidal teen from personal experience. Yes. You could write about body dysmorphia and body image mm-hmm. from personal experience. I hope you're not writing about getting fucked by a dog from personal experience. I really hope that's not the case. That's a letter of admission. <laughs> the story in that one is telling the story of somebody being told the story. Oh, so the personal experience somebody... is once some creeper told me about getting yes. fucked by a dog. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so the cover, there's three different covers <clears throat> on this. Oh, okay. So that is not the cover that I had. Let's get into the cover. This is the like, cover you had, right? That's the whole point. Well, yes. Like a... Yes. So I don't even know <coughs> what that cover is necessarily supposed to be, but this is the cover. I kind of like the, I think it might be the original cover. So this book came out in 2014. I think it was re-released in 2020. Burnt Tongues. It's got almost a fun 70s kitchen. It looks like a mechanical fun. Baba Yaga chicken house. Mechanical Baba Yaga chicken house. It's got the little house. chicken feet. I don't think it's chicken feet. I think it's like a printing it looks, it machine. It looks like chicken feet. Yeah, it kind of looks like, it's some sort of mechanic device that looks like some sort of printing press with, that's also a gun, that's also a torch, that's also a Baba Yaga chicken house. Yeah. There's no way to describe this thing, absolutely it's, not. Yeah, and it gets blurrier as I make it bigger, so I'm not really sure. And then there's fire coming out the top of it. Yeah. Which, to me, does kind of tell you what this is. And it even says, like, an it's anthology a, of it's trans- a trash fire. Yeah. No. <laughs> Transgressive stories is what it says. Yeah. It's Mary just, she's <laughs> laughing at me. But the other one... At least it's an honest cover. It's an honest cover. It's a super honest cover. Actually, I think it's probably one one of the more honest covers that we've had. The other cover that I saw that still has the, like, Baba Yaga Doom Machine on it has a more appropriate font, I think. Yeah. Because one of the fonts looks like a font that should be on, like, a 70s rom-com or drama kind of thing. Or, like, an all-in-the-family sort of font. 
And this one is more like Fight Club font. Yeah, it also, the other cover has a more neutral background. The mm -hmm. flames are a little less obnoxious. They're more red than orange, and they're toned down so they fit on the cover. But you still can't tell what that thing is, and in fact, it's harder to tell what that thing is. Yeah, and I'm going to assume it's a printing press of some kind, maybe from a weird angle. Either way, I really like this cover the best because it feels like graffiti on the wall. The one with the tan background? No, yeah, the tan yeah. background, yeah. So it's like Chuck's name is super big on the cover, which tells you how they're selling this. Yeah. They're selling it on his name alone, which, you know, at least again, you know what you're in for, because if you know what Fight Club is about, mm -hmm. you're going to go into this going, yeah, it's not going to be a joyride. It's going to be jacked up, and it's going to mess with your head. The... I think the font fits it better. Can we can we briefly talk about how fucked up it is when they try to sell books on who edited them? And we've seen that a couple times too with George Martin edited some sort of fantasy anthology mm -hmm. and it was like edited by George R. R. Martin. He didn't write this shit. The man hasn't quit giving him credit. But his name sells it. And exactly. that's the same thing. Same thing with this. And yeah. we've said the same thing about Patterson. Yeah, but I mean at least with Patterson, he's what? <laughs> well, it's his name, but it's also, theoretically, the ideas at the very least are his. They're being published through his publisher under his label. You guys can't see my eye rolling. No, she's, <laughs> she's rolling her eyes. But, and they're part of his brand. They're usually yeah. part of his characters that he's already created. This is, I got a bunch of my students to give me some of their stories and I put my name on it to sell it. Yeah. But he didn't take their names off of it. No. So I will give that. And again, you're not going to buy this anthology or read this anthology based on a bunch of randos who you've never heard of before, especially short story writers, because they're yeah. like, nobody knows who these people are. Maybe it was their final exam paper kind of thing. The, and some of these do sound like that, mm -hmm. because they're like college they're kind of transgressive. Um, yeah, I've, I've been through college uh, creative writing classes. <laughs> okay. Do you want do you want a, a, a side a side? Yes, let's do an not aside side rant. side rant. This is it's not a rant. It's a I don't know what it is. When I was in college, I was getting a creative writing certificate, a useless creative writing certificate to go with my useless bachelor's of, of English degree. I was in a class where we had to write scripts, script writing class. And we partnered with the film writing or the film class that was on our campus. I went to the Dinky campus. One girl wrote a story called Hedge 2002 because she thought she was clever. She was also in the film class. And so the idea of partnering with the film class was to have someone in the film class pick your script and either make a little movie or make a little play about it. And she was in both. So she picked her own script or it was someone else picked it, but she was in it. And the entire story was just her and the boyfriend sitting on the couch talking about how they don't have any money and smoking. That was the whole story. But, you know, she called it Catch 2002 because she thought she was profound. College some writing of, classes. Some of the stories in here feel like college writing classes. Then there is the cover that I actually did see uh, initially. And this is the cover that is for the ebook. I think it is also on the M paperback as well. Burnt Tongues Anthology does look like they're really pushing the whole, this is a college paper thing because we've got like the weird bust of like, I don't know, that might be it's, Nero or well, something. Well, it's like a black background and it's got, yeah, this like Roman bust with a crow on it mm -hmm. and a bunch of like little red, like creepy plants and a little skull in the corner. This looks like they're trying to go, do you like Poe? Yeah. Try this. Which, okay, <clears throat> to be fair, Poe probably would have written something like some of these stories in today's yeah. thing. Because really, Poe was writing transgressive stuff. Like burying your wife in the wall of your house and having the cat give it away and killing your Stop landlord. Stop burying cats and shit. Right? And, and killing your landlord because his eye freaks you out. And, yeah. like, siblings that are screwing each other. And <clears throat> so, do yeah. you feel like going, hey, this is like Poe, but now? Is, is that an appropriate kind of a cover to put on this? I think it's appropriate. Uh, somebody, somebody, Or is that also pretentious college writing? Somebody who's a purist about Poe will probably tell me that's super pretentious and no freaking way. But give this thing a chance. Like, really, I do think that that kind of the same, that's what they were going, to be fair. I think that's what they were going for. And some of the stories are really good. Some of them are like, ugh, this is super cringy because I know what you're trying to do. Mm. Giant air quotes around that. Trying to do. Oh, right. You know, because like the one where she eats the tapeworms is like so moral end to the story of, you You know, don't hate your body and don't try to... Either do horror nice. or do full house. You don't get to do both. Yeah, that's... Yeah. But the one about the cat... 
was really good and yet still kind of fell into the whole idea of like horror that bothers you because it bothered me that this had happened and it left me thinking forever about this poor cat and the happy ending the three girls who try to kill themselves like that seems very poe as poe would have gone there i do think that it fits the whole idea of this is what poe would have heard i just think like the image of the the bird on the bus is a little poe-esque yes yes with the little skulls and the, the vines and like this looks like it would be a cover to a poe collection it does have that energy to it also it gets a little lovecraftian but just a little bit because like the story about the girl who is being torn off the paper towel thing and her boyfriend's having weird nightmares about it like that feels dimensional into mm. weird stuff happening which isn't really post gay no but it, but then the eye was more like being haunted by the murders you did yeah yeah and a little bit of mary shelley in there a little bit you're telling me that it's a zombie cat no okay do you want me to tell you the cat yes yeah, so why don't you tell me the cat okay. story i will tell you the cat story so essentially this guy who becomes a uh, vet tech or something works in a humane society He's working there late one night, and this guy comes in with this cat who's been totally beat up. It's a stray cat, and the cat's been beat up, and, like, his eyes all busted up and stuff, and you feel bad for this cat. And then the guy, as he's cleaning up this cat and trying to help this cat, the vet guy starts talking about how when he was, like, eight years old or something, he tied this kitten to a balloon at his sister's birthday party because she was such a brat, and he was just mad that she got a kitten, and he, she was mean to him or whatever. And the kitten floated away with the balloon. And he's like, they never found her. They never found her body. That's I went that. looking for her and all this stuff. And it bothered him forever. And we never got a family pet because they thought I was a serial killer. And he wasn't. He just this stupid kid did a stupid no. thing. And this cat that he has in his office right now has the same markings as this little cat that he had lost. Like, so he thinks it's the same cat. So whether or not it is... Really, it's a blow-up cat. At the end... <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the story he calls his friend who is like a certified vet whatever and says hey i've got an emergency for my cat so like he adopts the cat i'm like all misty again on this like it's super sweet that like he realized that he fucked up and he put his whole life into helping animals because he felt so bad about this stupid thing he did when he was a kid and like and he even felt bad about it when he was a kid it wasn't like he did this thing and was like whatever i pissed off my sister no, it was like he really genuinely, that was never his intent. Mm -hmm. He was just trying to freak out his sister. He felt bad and he finds this cat and he takes this cat in. So it's not really important if it's the same cat or not. It's, it's a sweet story. Yeah, does it belong in this mythology? Yes, because everybody gets what they deserve, including this cat who like looks at this guy like he knows who he's talking about. But is about. that either horror or... It's Poe! When the animal has all this sentience and it comes back to you and it's like, yes, and now I'm here. You okay. make your choice. You're going to be nice. Close the kitten. Close the kitten nevermore. Yes. <laughs> anyway, that's how I feel about Isn't this. Isn't there a meme like that? Quote the kitten, feed me more. Yes. Quote uh -huh. the kitten, feed me more. Uh -huh. Yes, there is a meme like that. And so, yeah, that's our way of softening the blow on this story. So, it had a good ending. You, but you, it left me thinking about, like, the whole life of this cat. This is, like, you know, 14-year-old cat kind of thing. And you feel bad that this cat had this horrible life. But he lived. And now the guy is like, I'm going to take this cat in and I'm going to give it the best last year of its life. And I'm going to do the best I can with this cat. I'm going to do what I should have done. Yeah. I don't really. feel like they fit in the same mythology. Also, the guy that goes to expose a zombie whorehouse and ends up... I, I'm not giving away that one. I'm not going to read it. Okay, three, two, one, spoiler on this one. So he's doing an expose on the guys that go to the zombie whorehouse and runs into a woman who's doing an expose on where do they get the zombies from. And she's alive. And he ends up screwing her and taking all of her information and getting out and leaving her there. Okay. And really what it is about the cutthroat nature of journalism. One journalist finds out that the other journalist has got a better story and is like, no, dude, I'm going to screw you over. Like, and that was the ending story, by the way. That was the last story. The zombie whorehouse? Zombie whorehouse is the last. First story is teenage girls trying to kill themselves. And the last story is the zombie whorehouse. And everything in between is just that crazy. But I do think that as we broke down this cover, I think that this is the best cover, actually. The, the Poe po one. Yeah. Because now that I've broken it down, I feel like, yeah, this is probably the best cover. I don't know why it's weird weed, because it is in the know. weeds a little. I think it's supposed to look like the bust is maybe in a garden. 
an overgrown garden because it's also got the vines on the face yeah, of the bus. It does. It's got like a graveyard. It it's, also it's very know. it's very big. It gives me underwater vibes. You know why it gives you underwater vibes? It's because the face of the bus looks like the Prince Eric statue from Little Mermaid. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Does it, girl? I don't know. Are we really going down this road? Yes. Is this where we're going right now? I gotta get something out of this one. <laughs> it also has kind of a fun font. The it's more, it's kind of a Burton-esque font. Yeah, it's very Burton sort of squirrely font instead of the one that was more graffiti font. Okay. No, it doesn't look like him. The same color. Well, yeah, because stone is stone. It's blue. Jen says no. <laughs> no, it doesn't look, it looks like Nero or something. It's not, it looks like a yeah, Roman. it's supposed to be like a Roman something. Roman god statue. Maybe I should have done more research on what that statue was supposed to be. I don't know. I don't think it's. I think it's supposed to be a stock art picture of a statue. The little skulls in the corner, also, and the eye above it. It's just like let's just throw a bunch of spooky stuff on this cover. It does. It, it does look like let's just throw a bunch of spooky stuff on the cover in in kind of spooky and colors. And it was a spooky font. Ooh, Tim Burton is a spooky font. <laughs> And what are spooky colors? Blacks and kind of reds. reds and Ooh, and a raven. Poe has ravens. Raven. Is that all I have to say about this book? I think it was good. I'm an awful person. Jen enjoyed it. This book. Obviously, some people enjoy this kind of fiction, or they wouldn't write it. Yes, and I'm one of those people, and I apologize deeply for how jacked up I am and how screwed up my brain is. Please don't judge me. Speaking of jacked up horror fiction that Jen likes, how are you doing on your novella? Ah, yes! I'm actually doing really good. Thank you for shamelessly playing uh-huh. that for me. Yeah, I'm actually doing really good. Uh, except for this week, I got behind on things, so I spent a day busting out the chapter that I needed to have done. I am going to take a break from Kindle Bella and my gothic horror novel to write for NaNoWriMo, which Mary has decided she is not. No, not probably not participating this year. Unless you all write it and say how much you want her to participate. <laughs> Pressure. No, no. The only thing that got me through it last year was spite. Not having that left. <laughs> she has no spite left. I really love the fact though that what got you through last year was spite. Well, a little spite, or if it was, I was being competitive, petty, and I was like, I just wanted to write more than you. It wasn't even good. And you did write more than me, mm-hmm. and it was good. And then Jen was like, edit it, and make it a book, and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> Am I flipping out the f bombs in this one? Yeah, no. I, not with the content. No, no, no. This no. one is. This will be a, an adult, an adult rated episode. Yeah, we got to make sure that we put out a little warning on this mm-hmm. one. No one, no one no. of the age that they could screw. The episodes that I swear in a lot, I, or we talk about rom- romance novels or creepy death novels. Yeah. I, I, I put, I put the explicit on those. Yes. What do we have upcoming? I think a bad uh, Hades or Persephone book to read. I also think for Christmas we should read... Oh, are we going to read some... What was the one author that we found? E.N. Joy. When all is said and prayed. Yeah, when all is said and prayed. And to be fair, we were reading passages of it out of context. I don't know that reading it in context would make it better. But it seemed both racist and homophobic. But, you know, I could Beth of a doubt, maybe read it in context and see what it's about. Do we read a Christian fiction and an Amish Christmas romance? Oh, God. I do. I am. I am curious about Christian Rome. Most of it is Amish, but not all of it is. I will it's all either. Like... It's all either Amish, country, Christmas, or all three. Yeah. So I will bite the bullet on that one, yeah. and I will read the most Amish Christian country Christmas romance <laughs> that I can possibly find. <laughs> It's a a genre we haven't really touched on. And we'll see how many of those words I can find in the title. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's see if I can find the one that those, the most of those words in that title, and I will, I'll bite the bullet. That's the book I have to write for, for NaNoWriMo one of these years. I think the most obnoxious, unsexy, Hallmark-esque Christmas book I could possibly manage. Do that. You should do that this year. I don't think so. I'm really trying to get married and join me. For anybody else who is doing NaNoWriMo this year, I am E-A-S-A-L-L-E on NaNoWriMo, and I am looking for people to, like, coerce into writing and force me to write, because my students, my writing students... Oh, oh, see, see, this is why she wants me to do NaNoWriMo. Because last year, every week I was going, Jen, I wrote more than you, and that kept her ass going. It did! It did! I am motivated by other people's spite. Do you want me me to lie to you? (laughs) Yes. Jen, I'm writing more than you, and I'm sitting there painting my nails. Yes, lie to me. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You're not crazy, Jen. I'm not. I am taking a break. You're totally normal. Totally normal. I'm taking a break from both my Bellas, because I am writing two Bellas. I haven't talked a lot about the other one. It's a revisit to my pirate novel. 
novels and it's such a joke. I already hate it. But I'm also having a good time writing it because it's just palate cleansing. It's just stupid. My NaNoWriMo, though, is the second book to Cloud... All right, we've, we've gone completely, but that's okay. You're legit in it. That sounds good. Yeah, so that you have more time. Do what? NaNoWriMo! No. Anyway... <laughs> And on that note that I harassed Mary, this was us talking about horror books that aren't really horror books or something like that. It just messed up. Just messed up because I think the most horrible thing about life is, is real life sometimes. So Correct. Yes. On that, have a very safe and happy Halloween. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you so much for cracking another case with Mary and Jen. To learn more about Casing the Cover, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Casing the Cover. To contact us or suggest a book, email casingthecoverpod at gmail.com. New episodes of Casing the Cover release this fourth Tuesday on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. <laughs>